thank you very, very much for inviting me. I will talk about the uh, area of and its patients. Uh, this topic is based on the many years of joint work with Gerdad and Alexander uh, Lukon. The central notion of the theory is that of mineralization. This is a binary relation on the set of, of the real vectors of size n. I say that A is mineralized by B with uh, the sums of the components very big and solid. And uh, the sum of a the largest components of A doesn't exceed the sum of the three largest components of B for any new key. Uh, vector majorization has many applications in different areas of science. Uh, and uh, actually, it didn't, uh, wasn't developed independently as a separate uh, area. Uh, it arose independently in a variety of contexts. Uh, and, uh, as had little would employ a world in their book of um, inequalities, that uh, historical and bibliographical uh, questions are especially difficult in such like this, which has uh, applications in every area of mathematics, but uh, it has never been uh, developed systematically. And so uh, it's very difficult to trace an origin of a uh, familiar inequality because it uh, have occurred. Uh, it might have occurred uh, many years ago in some uh, memoir geometry or astronomy uh, without, so maybe even without uh, explicit definition. And then they just discovered uh, many times by different authors. So this is exactly the case with vector majorization. And um, third, so, uh, this seems to be the third uh, equivalent condition of what later has become vector majorization. Uh, it's favored by Murphy mentioned uh, number three on the symmetric functions. Uh, he has proved for the negative factors that uh, majorization of A by B actually is equivalent to this inequality for uh, monomials and change polynomials. So monomials and polynomials, uh, polynomial with its exponents A1 and A2, uh, if it is majorized by B. Is uh, doesn't exceed uh, the minimal symmetric polynomial with the exponents p1 again for uh, all curly uh, zero exponent seven. Mm -hmm. The gist. <laughs> yeah, this is the example. So we have uh, vector one one is majorized by vector two zero uh, because let's check the definition. Uh, so the total sums. Uh, then the maximal element, the, the, uh, the maximal element here is two and here is one. And so, majorization goes by definition. And what it means in terms of numerators and quality is that two x y is doesn't exceed the sum of square. And for this majorization, uh, just any non negative numbers, real numbers. It's a polynomial. What is x in this representation? The variable. It's a real number. Two comes from the second vector? Uh, no, two comes from the sum of. Uh, so here, this is a. So a1 uh, it was the sum of all the permutations. So maybe one, two, and one. So we have two permutations, but the same. Uh, the same polynomial x to the power of one and y to the power of one. Here we have x to the power of two, y to the power of zero, and the permutation of uh, x to the power of zero and y to the power of two. Um, what is the superspeed t? Uh, this is a permutation. T? Ah, t, uh, t is a transformation. Usually we consider a column of vectors. No, because one of them is missing. So here we have six sets of different critical logic, but different trigger, and this falls from majorization, six sets of that. Once again, we have the, the similar monomials for every permutation. Here we have double sum of 
but this is true for every unit non zero x y and non negative. Uh, so the the second origin comes from the Ghana context, uh, the economists in the early 20th century got interested in the ways to compare well distributions if the chain distributions are more equal. And uh, one of the third uh, development to this end is uh, what is now known as Lorentz curve. So we have a real vector that represents the incomes uh, of uh, n individuals. Uh, we assume that the negative, we solve them in the ascending order and plot the one star. So we plot the points uh, k over uh, divided by m and south k, the smallest elements of x divided by the sum of all elements. Then we can end the points by the line set. So uh, here you can see the value of Lorentz curve. Uh, Lorentz curve A represents uh, the uniform distribution. So if all uh, coordinates of X are uh, equal, then Lorentz curve is just a straight line. In every other case, it's, it's a curve that connects uh, the origin point one one. And the interpretation is the the more to spend, the less equal distributions. And actually, this is uh, this is equivalent in some sense to vector mean radiation. So, if we have vectors with the same uh, sums of components, and then Lorentz curve for y lies below Lorentz curve for x, even though if x is generated by y. Uh, Dalton took a different viewpoint. Uh, yeah, the is just the first order of the Weissenberg numbers. Uh, and often uh, the different viewpoints uh, led into the principal thrusters. Actually, it was uh, hinted at by Peugeot eight years before, but uh, uh, Dalton's work is uh, it's in the canonical con context. Uh, so, once again, we have a vector that represents well uh, for income of individuals, and we'll say that the transfer goes from uh, individual j to individual y, and j initially had more than y than i. Uh, so we consider this transfer, and the very natural observation is that the inequality is diminished if the delta is bound uh, to the initial difference. So the so of the year is the beginning. It's the beginning. Yes, yeah, we have many names. Of, of, uh, uh, Talk about that later. Uh, so some sort of average curves, and actually, uh, so this is the uh, result, or this is just an interpretation of no, this is an interpretation, and this is the result, which actually has been proved by Merkel, uh, but in different terms. But uh, it has proved that one, once again, for uh, negative average A and B, uh, the following are equivalent A is meteorized by B. This is the same as A can be derived from B by a finite number of Dalton's transfers. So you can define electromedia radiation and also in terms of numbers. Uh, it's a very good way to um, illustrate all this is with the help of your know, uh, diagrams. This is a another object used to represent many things like uh, monomial statistic polynomials, uh, partitions, and uh, even group representations in certain groups. So we have, uh, let's see, we have uh, three vectors. They are ordered in terms of majorization. This one is the, the largest, this one is the smallest among the three. Uh, so what actually occurs is in terms of development transfers, transfer of well, two from individual one to individual number two. Uh, and on this set, the wealth of one is transferred from individual one to individual three. Uh, and then in terms of uh, Merkett's uh, inequalities, it means this for every non-negative x1 is to x4. And since we've touched upon partitions, actually the dominant solder the natural order of partitions is, is also vector like, and the partitions are 
as I said, uh, sometimes uh, illustrated by young diagrams, so you can see the structure of neutralization on this set. Uh, a function is called short convex. Uh, if um, so, Ophelia, you mean a position of seven? seven number seven here yeah, to some of the numbers. And the partitions, the partition elements are older in any way? Is that an older? Yes, position? here they are ordered. Uh, we're talking about dominance order. Uh, so, when you are dealing with vector majorization, you sort them anyway. So, majorization up to a permutation. Uh, or rather, majoration doesn't change by permutation. And this has a, has a diagram. What relation does it uh, represent? Uh, um, each arrow is majorization. Mm -hmm. And uh, vector majorization is sensitive, so it's a parallel. Parallel, so it goes in the equation. Function is called complex. If uh, majorization of x by y implies that p of x, then we see p of y. And uh, it's called strictly for complex if, uh, uh, if if the inequality is strict whenever x is not a permutation of y. These functions are usually called uh, monotonic or isotonic or, or the preserving, but uh, they're named after insurance owner because if you start to systematically uh, investigate them for the generation. Is that for permutation or what? Yeah, B is a non-digital method. Uh, so uh, the the idea that uh, vector modulation is an appropriate way to convey the intuitive notion that com the components of a vector are more uh, of one vector are more nearly equal than the components of another suggests that if you are proposing some measures of inequality. They, uh, it is desired that they would be uh, short convex or even strictly short convex. And there are some other uh, requirements, for example, usually they need to be scale independent, but let's just give uh, a couple of examples of well known measures. For example, the variance and its normalized version, or rather, the normalized version of its uh, square, root, square root is strictly short convex. Uh, also, this measures some of Squares and its modifications. Uh, these measures of uh, proposed by Simpson in 1949. These measures are also very true boundaries. Um, what about, what about the, the beginning? Yes. So on the, on the next slide, because uh, there are several uh, measures that are connected to our curve. Uh, I'll on the next slide. And actually, sometimes you need strictly short complex measures. Of the office of measures of equality in theoretical context. If you measure if you are measuring equality of species, and then in the logic, these measures are used. If you call this, uh, this measure, and uh, so one over four, uh, one minus uh, one over three, four, one minus four. And the last measure is uh, in biology is usually referred to as the Simpson's measure of diversity. And the entropy is also simply for complete. Uh, Lorenz score can suggest several uh, measures. For example, the, uh, the famous DD index is the CP is actually twice there in Lorenz curve and the 45 degree line. Um, the following measures are not strictly short convex, but they are short convex. We are very interested in the minimum majority, which comes from the political science. Um, there are there are many approaches to measure the inequality in voting power. So this measure is actually uh, a minimal number of individuals controlling the majority in the legislature. So here X would be a vector of relative voting powers. And what's an X? An X is a X is a distribution, and X is a one star. It's the one star. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we have the numbers. Top uh, 100 times out of percent uh, is the amount of wealth that is controlled by the top uh, 100 times out of percent of individuals. A uh, physical poverty measure is uh, here, P is the chosen poverty level, and this is the total amount of wealth that needs to be transferred from people, from individuals above the poverty line to people below the poverty line in order to bring them all up to this. Uh, 
and the counterexample of the proportion of the population relative towards so the number of individuals who receive less than half in the income, this measure is not true by us. And also there is a proportion uh, about using such measures in connection to majorization because not every two vectors are comparable in terms of majorization. But if you have function, the real value function, then obviously you can always compare the images. Um, the very important application of short converse functions is uh, generating new or criminal inequalities. Mm -hmm. So uh, this you need uh, majorization and some sort of preserving or the preserving function, short converse function. Uh, this way you can prove many inequalities. And usually these inequalities have been proved directly without the various visualization of the random. A very good example is the determinant inequality, which was uh, proved, really proved uh, very short. So first of all, he proved that for every Hermitian matrix. Uh, no, we're talking about three numbers. Here, but yeah. So that's a symmetric one. Uh, Well, I think uh, actually, uh, I think you can allow for permission matrix because. Mm, but what's the difference? What are the way to this? Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, but, uh, let's say that permission matrix is positive semi difference. Let's uh, see this is the this is the case. So positive semi difference permission matrix. Uh, for it, we have. Uh, each one one the diagonal the vector of diagonal uh, of diagonal elements is majorized by the vector of the uh, eigenvalues. So you have a majorization now you need an appropriate short convex function and uh, achieve uh, real function is convex then the five x uh, is uh, which is the sum of the images of j of the components of x is short convex. So this function um, is short convex, and using this function for positive and definite emission matrices, you can prove the uh, advanced inequality. Um, and actually, the uh, reason um, the, you can reverse this uh, theorem actually even provide a stronger result. Seven by four years uh, If S and lambda are real vectors, S is majorized by lambda, then there is uh, not an intermission, but there's a uh, symmetric real, real matrix with diagonal elements applied to uh, them and eigenvalues uh, lambda. Um, but the first result the first for emission that we have for for positive semi-definite dimension. So they should have real uh yes, so both results refer to positive semi-different. Uh at the most important quality, yeah, sure. But the first theorem by sure. First theorem by here. It's true as anything, any emission in the yeah, there is a problem. Yeah, there you point out there is a problem with uh, the dating elements are complex and yeah, this would work. So you, you need a real value uh, uh real value dating elements. So yeah, it should, should be should be consistent. Uh so everything that I have talked about actually even precedes the the name vector majorization. The modern name and uh, terminology are uh, Ducati and Poya, and their book uh, in policies, uh, Among other things, they have proved the following uh, the condition. So X is majorized by Y. Here, X and Y are usually a real uh, This is if and only if for any symmetric complex function, real value function, we have F of X doesn't exceed F of Y. If and only if uh, X belongs to the common style of uh, vectors obtained by permuting elements of Y. And uh, the last so one, which is usually referred to the Hadley Wood theorem, 
uh, is there exist a double stochastic matrix such that x is d by x y? Double stochastic matrix is a negative matrix uh, with some elements in every row and every column, even at one. And the Baker von Neumann theorem characterizes this set as a convex hub of the set of all the implementation matrices. Um, the, the last statement actually gives a very convenient way to move from vectors to matrices. Uh, you just substitute vectors, vectors from matrices, and this is called strong majorization. Sometimes it's, it is also called invariant majorization, uniform majorization. Uh, because by this time, it's still it, it, majorization is developing independently by many people. So there are some sometimes confusion with the name. Sometimes this is just called majorization. Uh, so A is strongly majorized by D if there is a double statistic matrix so, uh, D, such that A is D. A and B are in them um, real matrices, and D is a square of double statistic matrix. I thought it was called equivalent to or like control with zeta. Yeah, in terms of for vector, this is equivalent, and now we use matrices. Interesting. Yeah. So this is just uh, this theorem gives a very nice, very easy way to generate. We have no problem substituting uh, here vectors and matrices, and it's not clear how to do it here. So this is strong but not yeah. the other direction. There is no weak term. There is a weak term. Uh, another approach to generalize is directional majorization. Uh, is directional majorized by B if uh, for any real vector B, A B is majorized by B, A B will be a vector, so we have usual vector majorization. Uh, it is not difficult to see that strong majorization implies directional majorization. But uh, expression whether they are equal at all. And this actually was proved by mistake in the book in 1952. But a year later, uh, one found a mistake and provided a counter example. So, what's, uh, what's difficult here? It's very difficult to prove directional majorization in the absence of sound contribution. But we have to show some that sound in the majorization holds for any um, vector of direction. By the way, directional majorization is sometimes called uh, majorization for the combinations or price majorization. So uh, we did can help with majorization. Uh, it is with the definition of similar to strong majorization, but we use rows So we don't require column sums in the ones. Uh, this was proposed by uh, Martin Sperry and Massey in 2005. <laughs> Yeah, any role of well, uh, the basic matrix is a negative matrix with every sum of elements in every row is one. And double stochastic matrix here is in addition sum of elements in every row of the uh, Why is this so useful and convenient? First of all, strong generalization implies direction, generalization implies weak. We can do this with a very nice and convenient geometric criteria. Simply means that A is, is majorized, it will be majorized by D, but only if the set of rows A lies in the convex hull of the set of rows of A. This is very easy to verify. Uh, also, know that directional majorization implies that the uh, uh, column sums uh, coincide with A and B is a column vector of, of ones. So, B G is a Row of all ones, so this is actually just the sum of elements in the columns of A and B. They should coincide. So, this uh, with this property, you can easily show that weak majorization doesn't apply directional. Uh, but can you show that directional majorization doesn't apply strong majorization using weak? Uh, yes, you can because you can reduce directional majorization to a collection of uh, uh, weak majorization relations. So A is direction measured by B, if and only if uh, A of A is uh, weakly measured by B of A, or uh, K from 1 to N divided by 2 M. A of K is an uh, N choose A, choose A times M matrix, uh, whose rows are all possible averages of K rows of A. So you take A, you take every K subsets and you, of rows and average them. Put them into matrix. 
or uh, I'm going to give an example. This looks like Dalby, the, the weak majority version. Like what? Dalby. Dalby of some um, distributions. So the the modularized one being less informative. Ah, uh, yes, I will actually remember uh, this. Uh, so. Uh, so for some visualization, you have uh, similar uh, characterization as was in the case of vector visualization in terms of primary functions the view to the nine. So using these two characterization, you can give a count, for example, but for for this complex function, the where it's failed, so there is no strong visualization. And let let us show that there is direction visualization through reduction to so these are the, the matrices A1 is, and A1 is simply the initial matrices. A2 is the all averages of two rows. For example, these two rows they average into zero zero. These two rows also. And uh, let's say the first row and the third row uh, average into one minus one. Uh, and actually, uh, for A2, Equals to M. This simply means that the common sums inside, which which we know is the necessary condition. So we we'll see that this can be simply done by plot the graph by comparing complex uh, sets. So the rows the uh, first one to A uh, uh, to zero minus to zero zero to zero minus two. So we can this rectangle and it lies in the complex how generated by the rows of B. So there is with majorization here, A by B, the same is true for uh, AF2 and AF2. Uh, so there is uh, there is direction generation, and this is actually the, the smallest count for example. Uh, this way. Uh, let's return to what it's over. Has very clear economical interpretations. Can we say something similar in the matrix case? So the difficulty is that uh, uh, in the definition of the Lorentz curve, you have an order of the elements. And you can't see the other rows of matrix. So you need some sort of uh, different notion of Lorentz curve or other a different definition. And actually, there is a way was proposed by Kashavoy in five. So let's consider Lorentz order for. No negative factors uh, with the same uh, sums of elements, x is less than y. If the Lorentz curve for y lies below the Lorentz curve for x, you know that this is simply vector majorization. Let's consider the reverse Lorentz curve. Uh, you can define it like this, but uh, easy way to view this is uh, here we, instead of the ascending order, we use the descending order. So it would be k over m. Uh, and there's sum um, of k largest components of uh, uh, x divided by the sum of all components. So here you can see a large curve for this vector, the large curve below, and the large curve below. So actually, it turns out that you can define this area. Why is this useful? Because it uh, one the large curve of y lies below the large curve of x, then the reverse of curves are in the reverse of So you can just Compare these uh, sets. Actually, this is the first way to get it. Yes, the beginning syntax is the is this is the area. And, so, and yeah. here you look not at the area, but the, the numbers. Uh, this this point is just a way to construct this area without using numbers. This was proposed by Joshua. This is called Lorentz Zenoid. So what you what you do is you do for every subset of um, one, um, you plot the following points. Um, the okay again we can speak in terms of incomes. So the proportion of the individuals in the among the population and their their total wealth. Those people. So you plot those points. So, for example, for one element sets, you have these points, for two element sets, you have these points, and so on. 
And uh, what you can do is you just take the common scale of this point. So uh, to construct this set, you don't need any order. You just need to, to cut some points and then take it from the set. This can be easily translated to matrix. Uh, so yeah, Lorentz Savoy is exactly the area between the Lorentz curve and its and its reverse. Uh, and uh, having this in mind, it means that we can define uh, or rather characterize the common variation down to the inclusion of the Lorentz Savoy. And uh, so this this can be done for matrices. Um, for a negative, for now it's talking about the negative matrices, uh, matrix A and times N. We uh, consider an auxiliary matrix. We have the column of uh, one divided by N. And this is the third column, and the last N columns are the initial columns of A, but divided by N. So what you uh, do is define this one set in a, in a similar way. These sets are called Lorentz ontologs. The Lorentz ontolog of A is the, the sign of line segments. This is the segment from zero row to the row to the ith row of this matrix A on the line. Uh, another way to view this is uh, a convex, uh, so similar to this. Uh, this is a convex uh, L of the following points for every subset of uh, the rows of. Uh, a over land, you take the sum, and this is one of the points. Yes, we so one over n in the, the right. Yes, I will, I will talk about this. Uh, so here we need a slightly different definition of the Lorentz curve because uh, this, is, uh, this is more a second line. Uh, the, the seven expression reaches one over n before the a. Where this is the third. Uh, the first line in the slide. Yes, the second line. Yeah, uh, here uh, you take every element of uh, every entry of A and divide it by that. So also on the right side. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in this case, if we consider uh, if we consider uh, vectors, then uh, one example is the Lorentz noise. So this is indeed the generalization, and. Uh, actually, Lorentz noise defines a matrix after the permutation. Road. And it turns out that direction in relation is actually the inclusion of the world sorting. So the multivariate analogs of the world sorting is direction realization. Uh, have, uh, have preceded this. Uh, uh, so what we should know that we use a slightly different definition of the world store. Here uh, we need to normalize by M rather than by some elements. And uh, this makes things more convenient because otherwise you can use the whole definition of the Lorentz curve. So here you would have to analyze not by n but by the sum of elements of a. But uh, this would make things this would make things less convenient for these two statements because you would have to or account to check explicitly that uh, the sum of elements are the same that you do for the Lorentz curve. But for this definition, you don't need this. And actually, for this definition, you can actually leave this uh, requirement. You can consider a uh, row at uh, every real matrices. Uh, but if you normalize by some of the elements in the matrix, you at least should verify that it's not zero. But if you normalize by any it's not a problem. And for the one order, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, the same one. Uh, and so for the sake of confidence, let's see what, uh, the, what is the multivariate. Uh, generalization of the Dalton transfer. The way to view Dalton transfer is by a transform. The T transform is a dialectic matrix with exactly two of the original elements. So, what is the Dalton's transfer? Uh, let's say that out is this is the you transfer the delta from J to I uh, and you take this alpha. And actually, what occurs is the average with this uh, with these coefficients. So, uh, which uh, Dalton transfer can be viewed as uh, T times Y, where T is a T transform defined like this one minus alpha times the identity matrix plus alpha times the Q, where Q is a uh, representation matrix that corresponds to the transformation of I and J. So this is indeed a T transform, so uh, double stochastic matrix with two of the annual elements. Uh, and the Dalton transfers, this effectively identify multiplying 
than what you see on the uh, on the left. So we can take this as a definition. This is usually called chain majorization. Uh, for vector chain majorization is vector majorization uh, because we know that uh, majorization is equivalent to the fact that uh, the S can be derived from Y by a finite number of double sums. So chain majorization is uh, X uh, is majorized K majorized by Y. If X is D times Y, where D is a finite product of D transform. So this is just a way to uh, uh, to say this, but this way allows for generalization. We can do the same for matrices. So, chain majorization for matrices A is K majorized by D, if A is D times D, where D is once again a finite product of two transforms. The experiment for me in the second box that's the most general to you. Everything can be expressed in this way. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, because, uh, so you have two of the elements. Uh, and by by the position of the elements, you can determine Q, and by the values, you can. Uh, so uh, in the in the vector case, they coincide, but in the, the matrix case, this is, is not the case. Uh, chain majorization implies strong majorization, obviously, because this matrix is still doubly suggesting. Uh, but the result is not true. This is a small example, but uh, unlike. With the strong interaction majorization, this is not that difficult to do this. Uh, so, some general properties of matrix majorization go before we proceed to the results. So, uh, uh, this relation, like all these relations, chain, uh, strong, direction, and weak, they are reflexive, they are transitive, they are not anti symmetric, uh, they are at least not anti symmetric. Because uh, they allow computation of rows. Uh, if A is uh, majorized by B, then that probably doesn't exceed the rank of B. This is again true for all majorizations. And this, this is actually the known fact that the determinant of a row stochastic matrix doesn't exceed one. Uh, ah, sorry, it's about the, about the, about the next inequality. If A and B are square matrices, then you have the same. Uh, Inequality for uh, some values of determinants. So uh, you can actually use this to prove independently uh, that the uh, absolute value of a determinant mm -hmm. for all specific metrics doesn't exceed one. This refers to which version of the measure? To all of them. Well, well, well it refers to weak majorization. So we talk about uh, inequalities, and this is enough for all of them, and uh, they are their alternative and uh, reflexive. Uh, so let's talk about our results. Uh, I will talk about three uh, subjects of this majorization for metric classes or matrix sets. Let's say that uh, A and B are two finite sets of matrices of the same size, the same size of matrices. Of uh, we say that the class A is majorized by B. If whatever matrix we can uh, take from the class A, we can majorize it by some matrix of class B. We uh, to fix some type of majorization, and we, we define this. So, for example, uh, if A and B are one element sets, then this majorization is simply matrix majorization. So, this is a you can say that this is a natural generalization. If B is a one element set, then uh, is majorized by B. Uh, it's not only if uh, uh, every x from A is majorized by this matrix Y. And if the situation is reversed, if A uh, is one element set, then majorization means that X is majorized by Y for some matrix. Right. And actually, um, this is what you talked about. The motivation for this uh, for this notion comes comes from theory of statistical experiments. So uh, we can say that an experiment there are models that say that an experiment given by matrix B is more informative than an experiment given by matrix A if A is majorized by B. What is a matrix of experiment? For example, uh, if you have a problem of classification, uh, then this matrix would be a matrix of conditional probabilities. So the probability of the, uh, the experiment tells you that the answer is high. Provided that the uh, correct underlying value is B. So you can compare these matrices and here different uh, types of majorizations were used, uh, especially one that I will 
talk further about later. Um, but yes, matrization actually can be viewed as being more or less important. Uh, for example, uh, uh, every double stochastic matrix is majorized by an identity matrix, and identity matrix is an ideal matrix of an experiment. So it means that the experiment never fails with the 100% probability it tells you the correct answer. And what is the worst matrix of an experiment? This is a matrix with all the elements in equal. So J is a matrix for once. The real, sorry, the real experiment is that I want to know what the J is. Uh, yeah, you want to know what J is, you perform an experiment and you get the I. And you, you, you know the matrix of probabilities. We could have a, we could have columns of uh, yeah, this is called synthetic matrix because uh, this is not the type of modulation that is usually used here, but I don't want to overwork uh, the uh, So, yeah, every column synthetic matrix actually may strongly majorize uh, this matrix, which is, which is bad in terms of the experiment. So, this makes sense. I would just want to give an example of the uh, to illustrate this model. So, so what's J? What is J? J is a matrix of all ones. So this is the matrix with every element being one over m, and this is the worst matrix in an experiment because it doesn't it doesn't differentiate between uh, between process and anyway. So if you compare two sets of experiments, then this uh, this uh, notion is quite natural because what we want to say that B is more informative than A. Uh, we can say that if whatever experiment we can choose from set A. We can find a more informative one in set B. So this was the uh, initial idea for this uh, for this notion. Um, due to the simplicity of the definition, many properties kind of natural analogs. So once again, for every type of majorization, this relation is reflexive and transitive. Uh, here you have inequality for maximum ranks over the over the plus. And in case that M is equal to M, it means that with the square matrices, you can say the same about the uh, maximum absolute value of the determinant. And once again, from majorization, by the direction, direction of the And uh, some problem properties are obviously weakened. So these two, uh, these are criteria in, in, the, in the matrix case. They become one side of the case. The reverse are not true. So the, the idea is that weak majorization is uh, including of convex hulls, and the reduction of the direction majorization to weak majorization, in this case, they only work one way. Could you remind what the object is? So uh, we looked at this problem. So let's say you've chosen some type of majorization. And you are given an arbitrary class of matrices. What is the minimal minimal power class, minimal majorizing class? Minimal by the number of matrices. Uh, you want to have as little matrices as possible to cover all the class A. Uh, for example, every the class of relativistic matrices is by, by definition is covered with majorized by an identity matrix. So one of them plus is enough. The same is true for double stochastic matrix and uh, Directional strong majorization. But the answer is obviously not always trivial, even for weak majorization. If you have this path, uh, it's a bit really natural number. Uh, so, because of these matrices, you need uh, at least as much matrices to majorize even weaker. And because, once again, we can use the geometrical interpretation, and each of these matrices, in the, if you look at the set of rows, these are the line segments. And uh, you cover them only by two by two metrics, so you can cover these line segments by line segments that correspond to the It's clear that here you need at least six line segments. Uh, so sometimes the worst case can you need as much elements as the initial uh, in the initial class. So what can we say uh, about weak interpretation? We here we have the rely on this uh, characterization, the geometric characterization. Dr. Wall, it's quite clear that if uh, you consider matrices with more rows than columns, then the answer is always one. And for, because, for example, uh, every 
pointed on two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional space, you can put inside a triangle. Uh, so they, this is what we call the ugly. The ugly. The ugly. The ugly. The ugly. The ugly. Yeah. Uh, so the 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 problem is non-trivial only if uh, uh, the number of rows doesn't exceed the number of columns. So in this case, we uh, can actually see when is uh, a classic matrix is, is majorized by one matrix. This happens if and only if all of these points, so every row of every matrix in A, they lie in the unified space of the dimension. So the, the relation of the right can be written as multiplication by a, a uh, stochastic matrix. Right? Yeah. This is a this is exactly multiplication by the row of stochastic matrix on the left. Uh, so this just follows from definition because a uh, row of uh, row of stochastic matrix is is a coefficient of a convex. Yes. Uh, that's. What we call more less important when you perform this integration. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we, we can already solve the problem. Um, we we try to find the one element covering pass, the two element covering pass, and so on. And uh, you consider every partition of A with A subsets, and uh, you can check uh, whether uh, the subset is majored by matrix, and we provide with Find this matrix is basically uh, obviously there's an algorithm that is far from optimal, but we were interested in, in the solution. You can use binary solution of A, you can use dynamic problem on the subset of A to optimize it, but this is sort of not the uh, law. Uh, also, if uh, for every matrix the rows of A form an N minus one dimensional simplex, then there is a problem on algorithm because you know. By uh, uh, a matrix, you determine exactly the prime space. You need to cover uh, this details. What is very interesting in the action is relation. Uh, turns out that we can prove the following theorem that uh, would allow us to reduce this problem for direction regulation to weak initialization, which we know how to solve. So it turns out that if A is such a matrix, uh, the column sums of these matrices inside, then this class can be weakly matrixed by one matrix, then it can be directionally matrixed by sort of another matrix, and we provide a way to find the C. So uh, the first, the first condition is that this one for any A in script A? Yeah, for, uh, yeah. for all matrices in this class should have the same column sums. Actually, this is, this is not a restriction because, well, this is not a significant restriction because we need the same. Way. This is a, a, this would be a, a necessary condition for this because the actual majorization so applies to the different colors of the same matrix. So you don't compare different matrices? No, this is different, different matrices. A, Y, and A, J are matrices in the Oh, so these are just indices? Yeah. Uh, I use for for the rows. I use uh, indices and brackets. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, they, they, these are uh, these and these are both necessary conditions. So we don't really receive so. So we can we can solve this problem for uh, directional majorization. Also, we divide a into subclasses by the common sums. The classes, you can say, for every subclass, we find a solution. Uh, for weak majorization, we well, already know how to do this, and uh, take a sub sub class that is weakly majorized by one matrix. And using this theorem, you can find the matrix. The answer is the class of all such, all such matrices. Um, let's go back to uh, majorizations of matrices uh, and about some natural problems. So, um, this question was posed by Darwin in 1999. Uh, what are the general characterizations of mediation for zero one methods? And then we have the same in this term. Can we say something more than just a definition? And we will this again for weak mediation. Um, once again, we use this, and uh, we can see that if uh, zero one vector 
lies on the convex hull of the zero one vectors, then it's simply is one for them. So uh, for zero one matrices with major gradients, simply mean that every row of A lies in the set of rows of B. Here we don't need the convex gradation. For directional majorization, using the total methods, you are able to prove that uh, if you take every uh, zero one row uh, and you have a majorization, and this row should occur in A uh, less or equal times than B. And since this is true for uh, every possible row, then you should have, you must have an equality. So uh, it turns out that for zero one matrices, uh, directional strong majorization I actually can inside that. This is just equivalent relations, and they mean that A is a permutation of rows. So now, actually, uh, talking about this matrization, uh, once again, there are different definitions, uh, different uh, different uh, names for it. I call it row matrization for convenience. In the original paper, it is called matrix matrization, which is quite convenient for, for this talk. Uh, so a uh, the definition is similar to weak matrization, but you multiply uh, by rows that get matrix on the right. So you, you don't have any nice uh, convex uh, properties, and we can uh, consider a similar version of the strong matrization. You multiply uh, by double stochastic matrix on the right. Uh, what you can see is that double stochastic matrization is simply a strong matrization for the transpose matrices. But this is really not the case for row stochastic matrix, for row uh, majorization and, uh, with majorization. But if you transform it, you get problems with this. Uh, so, what can we say? Uh, in uh, the, that paper, where well, actually you can use this uh, majorization and talk about many applications, including the ones that is called experiments. He gave uh, notorial characterizations from the graph theory of uh, this mutation for zero one matrices. Uh, if the matrices have uh, exactly two ones in each row, um, it actually looks like this. Uh, we can, if we have these uh, restrictions, so A and B are zero one matrices with two ones in each uh, row. It means that we can use them as instance matrices of graphs and vertices and, and edges uh, in, in a clear way. So you can uh, each row represent an edge, edges are a number because we can we can rows are a number. So the third edge in the graph A connects uh, vertices one uh, and two. Uh, and uh, by these matrices, you can you should build a graph H. With m squared vertices, which are pairs of neutral uh, vertices, and uh, it should have four, uh, uh, four times uh, n edges. And uh, how, how do you construct them? You take an h number k, an a, and an b. They connect the points in i1, i2, in a, g1, g2, and b. And you add the following four uh, edges like this square i1, g1, i1, g2, and so on. So uh, the, this looks like this. Uh, and actually, uh, this graph gives a characterization for row majorization. So uh, let's say the such matrices as discussed, then A is majorized by B if and only if. The following two conditions for first of all, edges, edges K and L are not adjacent in B, then they are not adjacent in A. And each it's just a sub uh, This? It's a sub H? Because that's the vision, it's a sub ah, yeah. uh, Each connected component of H is bipartite, and all the intersection vertices lie in the same part. So here we can see that this condition fails. Because these are two intersection vertices and they are connected by an edge, so they can be in the same part. So there is no majorization for these two vertices. Uh, let's mention a one interesting necessary condition. Uh, let's say that A and B are two arbitrary zero one matrices, fix an arbitrary row A and B, and we can construct the different type graph. Um, so 
in the following way columns of A with ones in this row are versus the first part, columns of B with ones in the eighth row uh, versus the second part, and there is an edge between uh, AJ and uh, uh, EQ if and only if AJ is uh, more or equal to EQ. This means uh, just element wise. Uh, these are columns. Uh, so actually, uh, in, the, in this case, uh, oh, not in this case. If you construct the graph, what are these uh, J and A number? This uh, this is J uh, column of A. Uh, you take A two indices and you compare the columns. If the column in A is larger than the column in B, then you draw an edge in the graph from from the first part to the second part. Oh, it's it's an algebraic graph, so it doesn't. Matter. Uh, the first few bullets define the define the band of the band of the band of the band of consider a pair of vertices. Yeah, of the band 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 of the 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 way we draw an edge. Absolutely. So AJ is a low zero if so one in the i column yeah. of a. So we so this is just a rule in which we define edges in the first yeah. uh, And the interpretation of our own generation in this context is that graph G has a perfect match. So the hypertide graph has a perfect match and it's easy to verify. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can give a criteria. So here uh uh, a is for arbitrary zero one matrices, A is uh, row majorized by B. If and only if you have the following inequality for every real matrix Y. Here, are, so on the left uh, path, for example, you use uh, A, uh, the matrix A, only as information about the, where the ones are. So this is the sum of elements of Y that are in the same position as the ones in A. Well, this makes sense because zero one matrices are exactly the what is a zero one matrix? This is an information where ones are. So on the right side, you have something similar, but with the choice of the column, uh, also according to the ones. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in the next paper, we were going to discuss zero one, zero plus minus one matrices, but uh, we've covered more general questions. Let's let's talk about weak majorization. Uh, weak majorization, you don't need the number of rows to be the same. So with weak majorization, you with this uh, representation you can be reduced to uh, considering whether each row A lies in the common set of row to B. So you can you can consider weak majorization just the majorization of a row by a matrix. And actually, you can go in further, you can always assume that you need to that the row is zero. Because you can, you can change the matrix on the right. Uh, actually, using this, so what we have reduced uh, with majorization to we just need to verify that the origin lies in some common stuff. There are always many, many ways to do this. For example, with uh, uh using it, we can say that uh, zero row is majorized by a matrix, even though the common space of three doesn't contain a positive factor. If we use the definition of that of uh, weak majorization, we have something similar that uh, the null space of the transpose of E doesn't contain uh, does contain a zero negative factor. Uh, and uh, when can you use this? For example, if A is the vertex edge uh, instance matrix of a directed graph, then a zero row is majorized by transpose of this graph, you can only leave the graph as a directed cycle. Or you can say the same thing in terms of the method flows, but the, the, in the direct cycle is equal. So let's um, let's try to estimate the coefficients of the common combination. Let's say that metric now both metrics and uh, the, the row are integer. So in this case you and then uh, Use rational convex uh, combination. So if there is weak majorization, then A is a convex combination of the row to B. 
So what can you say about this? First of all, you can make them fractional if the, the initial D and A are integer or rational. But you can say even more, you can uh, estimate the uh, denominator. You can pick a denominator from this set. Uh, Delta D is the maximum absolute value of minors in this matrix, this is P with the additional problem of ones. Uh, so you can do, you can check modulation by doing a finite exhaustive search. If you, need. you obviously wouldn't do this if you just need to verify if there is modulation, you would, be, you would, would use senior optimization, which would be faster. But in some, in some theoretical concepts, you may, you may want to do this. So how can we actually uh, evaluate uh, delta D? Uh, for example, using the man determinant bounds, uh, if A is a uh, matrix with entries with entries from the complex unit disk, so for example, if we are interested in the zero plus minus one matrices, they are also here. Uh, so then uh, the absolute value of determinant doesn't exceed M to the power of the element delta. The, the starting point is that the distribution or is... uh, no this is the uh, this is the bound so this is uh, the first box no this is the uh, the first box no this is uh, this is not the definition this is the estimate on what uh, we can restrict ourselves to uh, the coefficients in this set so if there is majorization, we have some convex combination. For so any for any vector A. Uh, well, let's pick some vector A and matrix B. Uh, if there is a majorization, then uh, by definition there is a convex combination. So we were interested in whether we can uh, restrict this set of possible numbers. So in general, you can take any real number between zero and one, that sum of the one. So first of all, you can take rational number, identify it there. And the uh, second one, you can actually pick the denominators. So, uh, from, from this, uh, so this means that there is, uh, there is a finite set of uh, coefficients you can choose to see if there is a gain in the uh, So, this Adamant round is uh, attained on so called Adamant matrices. These are zero, uh, these are minus one plus one matrices. With the uh, mutual terminal rows, these matrices exist for orders one to a uh, multiple of four, and it is conjectured that there are matrices, there are such matrices for every uh, for every such or such matrices. Uh, there are matrices, matrices uh, for which this uh, bound is a base. Um, <laughs> So the condition of the entry is uh, the single the of complex unit. So, 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 so how come existence come into this discussion? No, just the uh, science, science no. So the existence of what? Existence of other matrices. No, I'm just I'm just saying that this bound is the exact. I don't, I don't get the existence of the, the existence of the matrices in which there is equality, right? Yes. Quality. Oh, yeah. that, that's what I use. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you if you consider zero plus minus five matrices, you can uh, say even more. You can substitute m by the rank of this this matrix. Don't need the size of the matrix. You need the only the rank because the rank takes the order of the branches. Uh, we can say even more for a special class with zero uh, plus minus one matrices. Totally in modular matrices are uh, such matrices that every is minor is in this set. So, in particular, uh, entries of such matrices are also in this set. So, they are widely used in mathematics. For example, such are incidence matrices of directed graphs, incidence matrices of bipartite uh, and directed graphs. And uh, so, here, once again, we can go to the other and uh, say that B is. Uh, the, pos the possible terms you can pick, the possible denominator you can pick from this set, from one to R, where R is the one to this uh, So here the, the, the exotic search is quite small. Uh, 
in case without the numerical matrix, you can you can do this. Although once again, if you have a total the numerical matrix, you can use linear optimization more efficiently because if the uh, in linear optimization, if the matrix coefficient is of the modular, then uh, the the of the solution is so let's concentrate on arbitrary zero plus minus one matrices. Uh, talk about once again weak matrization. We have a row of zero plus minus one row, and for the show we can define the support sets. The positive support is the set of indices for which AJ is one, negative support minus one, and the zero support. Zero. So these are the set of indices that characterize the zero plus one. And you can use the following uh, set of indices for matrix E and the row A. Uh, so the definition is the following uh, these are such um, either positive uh, support of A lies in the positive support of the I and negative support of A lies in the positive support of the I. But what it means actually is that if I is in the set I of the uh, A, it means that for every uh, for every element of A, for every, for every AJ, uh, if it is non-zero, then it should be equal to the respective element of the A row. Uh, so what it means for quick um, majorization, it means that we can reduce it to some matrices. So first of all, corner cases, if this set is empty, then there is no majorization. If uh, this set is not empty, but actually there are no zeros in A, then there is majorization. And actually, this simply means that A is, uh, uh, is a row of B, is some row of B, because if A has no zeros, then this should not be the case. Uh, but if they're both not empty, then you can reduce, you can reduce B majorization to uh, majorization over some matrix of B. Uh, it should majorize the zero row. The, the difference between the first reduction that I mentioned to the zero row is that here this is a submatrix. So this matrix stays zero plus one. Um, what can I say about directional stroke majorization? Here you consider the same set uh, and look at the cardinality of the set. Then um, uh, directional majorization implies that the cardinalities. Uh, the delta of uh, AX shouldn't exceed delta of BX. Uh, this is analog, analog, uh, analog of what happened for zero one matrices. For zero one matrices, we showed that uh, we have shown that uh, every zero one row occurs in A uh, less than or equal times. And here you don't have uh, something as strong, but you have something similar. Uh, you just really slightly the relaxed uh, requirements. And for some majorization, actually, we can say even more. Uh, we can always assume that the this inequality is strict because if there is an inequality, you can reduce strong majorization to a strong majorization of two pairs of sub matrices. Uh, so, yeah, there, there are some combinatorial approaches to this. And the, the final topic for today linear preserver problems. Uh, these are problems that are uh, concerned with characterizing uh, linear operators that preserve some invariants, some matrix invariants, or matrix functions, and matrix relation. Talk about in the series Venus. You characterize the linear operators on the space of the square uh, com complex matrices that preserve the term. It means that uh, for every matrix A, Determinant of A equals the determinant of the image of A. Uh, it turns out that these uh, preservers are exactly this either f of x is m times x times m, or uh, the same the other functions follows x. Uh, the only restriction in m and m is that uh, their uh, product should have determinant one. It's very clear that these separators indeed preserve the determinant. Because what, if, what is the determinant of this matrix? This is the determinant of x. But what is unclear is that, and rather surprisingly, there is nothing else. And usually in the linear preserver problems, this is a part that is difficult, that is more difficult to prove. Uh, 
uh, you can see by a preserver as well, because it's always not always the case, but you can see by a preserver that it preserves, but the difficult part is to prove that there is nothing. So that's the second, probably the second result is here to here and there. It's a quite similar result. The result is a characterization the maps that preserve the set of a singular matrices. So an image of a singular matrix should be a singular matrix. And you have something very similar. The, the only restriction now is that uh, M and should be. Um, so this is uh, this is a generalization of the idea of the short convex sets. They are the preserving function. Here is there you have all the preserving operations. Operators. So if it was determinant is zero, it's still actually the same like the same. Uh, here, here you need uh, bijective operators. Mm -hmm. Here you need bijective. This is a characterization of bijective operators. So uh, here this is a characterization of bijective. So uh, a bijective operator. Okay. Uh, so what are the general types of the linear preserver problems? You have uh, a space of universal matrices over a field, or these problems are also considered functional analysis and it can be more general strategy, but uh, space of a but uh, for other purposes, let's consider the space of uh, matrices. Uh, so linear preserver problems are consulted with linear operators, so that resolve, for example, the function find on the feed. Uh, so that's a uh, little bit here. But for example, we're uh, determined. Uh, so, uh, an example of uh, operators that preserve function is this function here is a determinant. An example of an operator that preserves a set is in this. Here, the set is a set of singular matrices. And what we would be interested in the uh, linear operators that preserve binary relation. So, uh, if you preserve so binary relation, uh, there is no uh, uh, it results uh, with also by the relation with this relation in the pre image implies the relation. Is it very bad? Not in all the uh, well, you can you can start to do general, generally, general definition of the binary relation, but in, in our case, majorization is a pre order. Um, the first result uh, in this uh, uh, for majorization theory is here by Handler. Uh, he characterized linear operators that preserve uh, that relation. Uh, it turns out that uh, these operators are exactly the following either uh, f of x is a uh, sum vector s scaled by uh, some of the components of x or um, this is uh, uh, either this is alpha b x plus b j x or so some alpha and beta are arbitrary real uh, uh, numbers. So B is arbitrary representation matrix and j is a matrix. Uh, so what are what are the matrices of these operators? So the first type uh, it simply means that the matrix of the operator should have the same problems. And the second time, simply means that the matrix of an operator is a linear combination of uh, the matrix of all ones and some permutation matrices. Uh, this, uh, uh, this result allowed to, uh, to characterize linear operators preserving matrix majorization. This is one of the first results. So, actually, the third result probably was a year before, but it only characterized strong majorization. It's my first opinion. So, Lee and Poole in 2001 actually proved that he preserved uh, strong majorization, even though Lee preserved direct majorization, even though Lee did strong majorization in the pre image, implied direct majorization in the image, and only one of the following holes. So either uh, f of s is a linear combination of several chosen of n chosen matrices with coefficients uh, sums of elements in the columns of x, or this is simply the xr plus jxs, 
our unless arbitrary matrices of order M is an arbitrary invasion uh, matrix, and is what it is once again matrix equal ones. So let's uh, let's look at the third uh, uh, third condition. This these types of operators are called uh, converters. So the this is a generalization of a preserver. It doesn't need to preserve, but it, it doesn't preserve it changes. So you have uh, one type of majorization the pre-image, uh, then you should get a different type of majorization in the image. So they are called they are called how? They're called uh, converters. Converters, yeah. Linear linear converters. So this is uh, actually a converter from some majorization to the action. And this is also quite a problem. Uh, Boy was interested in it. Uh, he was interested in whether there are uh, linear operators uh, that convert permanent to the term. Permanent is defined in a similar way, but without uh, alternating the sign. And uh, what is permanent? Permanent is defined the same way as the, as the determinant, but you don't alternate the sign. Without alternating it. Yeah, without alternating the sign. This, uh, this makes it almost impossible to compute. So if you if you can uh, compute the permanent in a polynomial time, this is a much more uh, uh, strong uh, statement than P equals MP. So yeah, you can see why this is very why this would be very interesting because interesting because if you had set functions even on some on some special sets, then you can uh, then you can uh, count permanent. By applying uh, an operator and then getting a determinant, which is very easy. Uh, oh, in 1913, he was in <laughs> No, he wasn't, but he was, well, it, it was known that permanent is uh, difficult to become. Actually, I think actually permanent precedes the permanent. Yeah, it, it, it obviously it has, now it has a lot of applications. It, even by that, but this is this is a definition that is here. Yeah, but the term is much more natural than this. Is. Yeah, yeah, but he wants where I have this. Uh, <laughs> this is one thing on my point. I've never seen any use of permanence. This is a normal use. Use uh, what in the tropical geometry and then chin. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure that I think any economics also in the views. Uh, so, but by the way, this is a very difficult problem even for zero one addresses with the computer term. Uh, so, uh, we will consider the two results linear operators preserving strong maturation of zero one addresses and linear converters. So, what is a linear operator that preserves strong maturation of zero one addresses? It simply means that it preserves uh, uh, some mediation plus some mediation in the image, but we only need this to be true for zero one matrices. And we don't we don't require uh, the images to be zero one matrices because this condition is very interesting. We know how this uh, operators look, look like the the choices are then they're quite quite simple. So we will not require this. Uh, this problem, not surprisingly, this problem has uh, combinatorial applications. So let's consider the following uh, the following uh, We have a zero one matrix, and let's uh, say that delta k is the number of rows. Delta k of a is the number of rows of a that start with the k ones. Uh, so we say that delta k of a is invariant under any column implementation of a. The delta k of a is the same as delta k of a e for any permutation. So you, you permit the columns of a and you get the same, the same results. The number of uh, rows that start with k ones. So, so this is a very interesting example. This is actually a matrix of a finite projective plane of order true. It comes from a very beautiful area in the parametric theory that is concerned with set intersections. You can, if you have a system set, you can place a intersection here in, in a matrix. So here you can see the delta one of A and delta two of A are invariants. Um, uh, 
and because uh, the transpose times a equals to the y plus two times the energy matrix plus g. So what it means, it means that uh, in every column a there are three uh, elements because the diagonal here is three. Uh, so it means that one is the uh, delta two of a uh, is also invariant because every non-diagonal element is one. So here, uh, every two columns intersect by one row intersect by intersection. I mean the number of rows which uh, have one single columns. Uh, but that the trick here is not invariant. Uh, actually, this is the smallest common example. But this is the smallest matrix that we have. So the one of A and the two they are invariants. So why is this uh, why this relevant? First of all, we can. Uh, Characterize such matrices that delta k of a is invariant for every k. And the such is quite simple either a is a permutation matrix or a, a complement of a is a permutation matrix, or all columns of a are. And uh, this is interesting because uh, this is exactly the way that maximal elements uh, are placed in the matrix that preserve strong minimization of uh, the zero one. The of zero and using this theorem, we can prove that actually, if that is not free, then this is enough to preserve zero one vectors to preserve vector majorization in general. And for matrices, this is the this is also the case. So this means that we can prove the theorem of under the theorem of weaker assumptions. Of zero one vectors uh, on the zero one vectors, zero one matrices. And uh, if n is three, then there is one additional type of integration vector case, uh, you know, an additional type of operator in the vector case, and one additional type of operator in the matrix case. Uh, but actually, you don't need to ask for a lot uh, to obtain preservers of major addition in general. So if uh, he preserves majorization on zero one vectors and uh, one addition of relation for other two, then it preserves in general. And for matrices, you need yeah. So well, once again, you can prove uh, theorems of angle and Dupont using the assumptions in this street. And uh, the last thing, I think I will uh, skip this, but uh, uh, we have characterized converters very very nice to uh, weak uh, strong interaction hydration. There are six converters, but one of them was known. This is the theorem of uh, this is the theorem of even pool. For other five, we have the following results. So for converters from that uh, hydration from you look the same, but you have one additional uh, requirement part, which for n. Um, under four means nothing, and for m over three means the prime of r is one. Uh, it turns out that there are almost no zero uh, converters from weak modulation to strong, or for weak modulation to direction inside only if n is two, and this is zero grade. So this would suggest that in terms of preservers, there is a very big gap between weak modulation and strong one. So if you uh, Consider the this way, the converters go this way, then there should be a lot of converters. But surprisingly, this is not the case. Uh, the operator converts strong majoration to weak majoration, if and only if it results. So, once again, we can go to the using this uh, assumption, which is much. So, I right, thank you for your attention. And uh, this is a list of all components. Thank mm -hmm. you.